Are you at the house yet? No, I'm going to be late. Your grandfather isn't here yet, and now I'm worried we won't make it to the garage before they close. Will you stop and get some eggs on the way? Thanks. I'll see you there. You need a lift, young lady? I called three times. Sure. You want me to answer the phone while I'm driving? Let's go. I think we have just enough time to make it to the garage. You know where we're going? Hitchcock Street. No, Houston Street. At the corner with Hitchcock. No, Dad, by the bowling alley. You must have moved it since last time. You didn't have any trouble finding your way over here, did you? Of course not. Oh, it's just... I've been thinking about Beverly's wedding. Well, what about it? Oh, she knows that I don't care for her fiancé. No interest in the arts. Bad sign, if you ask me. But your sister has made her choice. What do I know? She's only married 45 years. I'm not talking about the groom. I'm talking about you. Well, don't worry about me. I'll be the soul of discretion on the day. I won't say anything. I give it a year. I'm talking about how you're getting there. Well, I don't want to spend two days. I can get there by two if I get an early start. What is it, 300 miles? That's my point. I think it's too far for you to drive. What do you mean? It's a long trip, and I'm concerned about you making the whole drive by yourself. Don't you think I have enough sense to pull over if I get tired? I think you may be asking too much of yourself. You just don't want me to make a scene at the wedding. Don't be obtuse. You know what I'm talking about. I've been driving for 60 years. I've been concerned for a long time. What are you so concerned about? Dad! Oh. <sighs> You've been driving erratically. You distracted me. And what about that guy? Hey, a signal would be appreciated. I don't care about that guy. I care about you. should consider giving up the car. If you don't like my driving, you can get out and walk. I just don't want you to run into a telephone pole or something. What makes you think I'll do something like that? Your neighbor with the terrier. Mrs. Linda. Mrs. Linda. She told me about your incident in front of the drugstore the last time I came around. Edna Lindham is a busybody. You tried to drive into oncoming traffic. And an unreliable witness, the woman is half blind. When was the last time you had your eyes checked, by the way? 82nd Street in Maple. They had the right lane closed for months. I just didn't know they were finished, and I didn't even scratch the paint. It's not the only time you've made a wrong turn or hesitated. And you've never made a wrong turn? Not on streets I've been driving my entire life. I'm worried about you. So is Beverly. Everybody's worried. That's one incident in 25 years, and I told you what happened. Can't you stop driving for me so I won't be worried all the time? Stop it. I'm not a child. Dad. No. I understand your point. I, I just don't happen to agree with you. Okay. If you don't care about yourself and you won't do this for the family, what about the innocent people you could hurt? There are thousands of accidents that happen every day that are caused by people a lot younger than me. Their reflexes haven't slowed and they don't have lapses in concentration. Do you know what you're asking me to do? Yes. I don't think you do. Do you want to put me in a nursing home? That's not what I'm talking about at all. You're doing very well at home. There's no reason to even have that discussion. It's way beyond what I have in mind. Do you know why I'm doing well at home? Because I can do what I want. I, I can go into town for the theater. I can go to the VFW to see Jerry or George. I can go to the doctor by myself. I don't need anybody to help me out. If I can't get around, I might as well be in a home. Oh, you're being ridiculous. Am I? Look around, what do you see? Houses, Dad, what's your point? My point is, suburban living is fine, as long as you can get around. Do you want me to be stuck at home all day playing canasta with Edna Lindham? <laughs> God forbid. Okay, then. There's got to be 
some other way. If I can't get around, then I'd be a prisoner in my own house. You could always come live with us. No, that's a bad idea. You all leave first thing in the morning, and then I'd be stuck at home all day without even Edna for company. Eventually, you'd get tired of me and pawn me off on your sister, and then I'd have to start worrying about what happens when she gets divorced. <laughs> Dad! One year! Be nice. <laughs> Besides, what about the old house? What about the house? You should have no trouble selling it in this market. Yeah, but I always thought you or Beverly would want the old house. Dad, everyone's settled. We don't need it. Great. Now I'll be stuck in a house that nobody wants. Dad, why are you turning here? Hitchcock Street, right? Houston Street. You know, your mother and I used to take this car into the city all the time. We'd go to the theater, the dinner at the White Horse Tavern. Dad, that's it. What? What do you think about moving back to the city? You go to the doctor in town anyways. I, you could go to the theater whenever you wanted, the library, the museums. And I wouldn't need a car. What do you think? I'm trying to form a cogent argument. It's a very appealing idea, but it would be a big change. We'd help you through it. Just think about it, okay? All right. And maybe limit your driving in the meantime? I suppose. Lisa? Are you okay? What is it? No, no, stay there. We'll come get you. Lisa backed into another car at the supermarket. But she's fine, but her bumper's ruined. You know, statistically, young people are much... Dad. Are we going to go over there now? Yes. Do you want to... Yes. <laughs>